hi everyone welcome to my revived youtube channel thank you for everyone who took the poll on my instagram stories i wanted to do this as a live video or blog post but a few people mentioned that for posterity's sake so that people can watch it over and over again you should just do a video and upload on youtube which reminded me of the fact that i have a youtube channel so here I am doing this video and I hope that it will be a blessing to you and I'm excited to do it um, and I hope that you know you enjoy it <laughs> all right so today um, I'm gonna to be reviewing this super amazing book called uh, Esther anointing and it's a series so there's the Esther anointing there's the Deborah anointing Hannah and Anna that's Anna the prophetess anointing as well I didn't get the Anna anointing but I have the other other three and it's i mean it's been really remarkable reading this book so i'm just gonna dive right into it the book is very 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 you can see it's very small um see the number of pages it is 130 pages very very easy to digest 130 pages and you have 10 chapters and um the 10 chapters i'm trying to see averagely you have like five to six pages so it's it's actually a very 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 great book um so you can consume it in one sitting but i don't advise that you do because it's a book that is very very deep and it's a book that you have to reflect on so i would prefer if you do a chapter a day or a chapter every two days one chap one one day to read the entire chapter and the other day to like reflect on your notes and you know what you did i mean you can't really see it but i was just underlining at like crazy as i was reading and taking notes as well so the book really is as the name is esther anointing esther in the bible it tells us the story about esther but i really like the fact that it doesn't um focus on the common things that we're used to about the book of esther so when people talk about esther is that oh this girl you know from nowhere they they start with vashti how you know she refused the king's order and this girl came went through this process of beautification and then went to see the king and she was favored and she became the queen and then Mordecai um tells her about this plan to kill all the jews and then she goes if i perish i perish oh no, no i forgot the another popular statement um perhaps we were made for such a time as this and then she goes if i perish i perish and then you know the victorious end so it's, it's a feel-good story that's very great nothing wrong with that narrative but um what's her name now michelle she takes us into another perspective that really gets you thinking and one thing that i took out of it is is the background that Esther came from. So people with the Esther anointing, for example, are people that they've not really had a smooth um, childhood or a smooth background. So Esther was an orphan. Uh, she was pulled away from life as she knew it. So as with royalty, um, what had happened was when the king made that declaration and they said that he should get the virgins, I think it were 300, they just literally went to Ghana almost like kidnapped the girls right and put them in the court now what even fascinated me was so you have the main courts where the king is and then he had this harem where all his concubines were so what had happened was when the 300 came and he slept with each one of them i'm like god what kind of thing is that the ones he didn't like so all the people that didn't qualify now went to the harem and that was the end of life as they knew it so that was potentially that could have potentially been Esther's fate, you know, if she didn't find favor before the king. So taking us that through that traumatic background, you know, I like the fact that she highlighted the struggles Esther would have had and why even that request from Mordecai to meet the king when he hadn't, you know, requested for her would have been very trying because her life, she was an orphan and this was a time where, you know, the jews were in captivity so her life was quite traumatic and then she had reached this place and she's at the palace and there's some semblance of peace and, and order and stillness and security and then Mordecai comes with this request and says go and do this threatening her own security so she really had to 
think beyond herself and remember that the first time that she got the report she told the the what's his name now hair guy to go and tell Mordecai that ah this is not something I can do because the king hasn't requested for me. It was not until the second time that she now said, okay, you know what, fast, me and my maids will fast and, you know, if I perish, I perish. But that background for me was very, very important that it made me realize that everything about your life, the good, the bad, the ugly, the things that you just, you never ever want to remember in life, everything god uses together for good for fulfillment and accomplishment of his purpose so that was something that i really really got and that's something that you should be able to treasure your your pain not that you'd you glorify the pain or you dwell on it but to know that there is a purpose within that pain and there's actually a chapter um trying to look at the name of the chapter there's actually a chapter about that um that deals with okay yeah taking from trauma to triumph and then dealing with pain and getting out your purpose from your pain now finding favor another thing that this book also opened my eyes to is the concept of favor you know we, we pray for favor a lot it's i mean every christian knows that favor is a big deal but seeing favor from the dimension of your assignment and that chapter was actually called favor for your assignment so it's not just favor for the sake of favor not just favor for the sake of ah, i want to be a billionaire oh i want the best jobs god give me favor in the eyes of the md it's favor for your assignment so do you even know your assignment if you know your assignment you're going to be praying that god should grant you favor in the eyes of those people that have the resources for your assignment because God gives an assignment and you believe for resources there are human beings that he has um, placed the resources in their hands so for example I'm just remembering um, Elijah when it was at the brook cherries and the ravens came to feed him so the resource or the resources were deposited in the hands of the raven or should I say the clothes and then afterwards the ravens didn't come again he had to go to the widow of Zarephath so God uses human beings to bless us, to push us further in our destiny, to align us with the assignment that he has for us. Now, our duty is supposed to, first of all, understand what our assignment is and pray in alignment with that assignment. Very, very, very critical. A lot of us ask for favor for the wrong things, even myself. So that, that chapter really was, was really mind-defining. And then also... One chapter that really got to me was the power of your perfume. And this is not even literal, you know, perfume. It's it's the fragrance that you radiate. Um, have you been around some people and they just have this bad vibe? They just leave this, um, they just have this aura. Yeah, maybe we'll just use that word that is just negative. What essentially in this chapter was saying was that Esther radiated a perfume or gave off an aura that people were generally attracted to which which really was the reason one of the reasons why she was favored so she didn't think ah you know she was an orphan she didn't let that you know mask her aura or mask her demeanor or mask her attitude you know she was very submissive to the process to submitting to the eunuch that was in charge of the woman and he gave her extra you know treatments and all of that and she was also very submissive having the right perfume and giving of the right aura as women is very 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 critical and that's sometimes a lot of times you, you've been hurt and this also even applies to me you've been hurt and you know you me if I'm hurt I block is that I block you I block that experience and you let that mask what God is about to do or mask the glory of God upon your life. You let the past pain, the past anger, the hurt, the drive for revenge. Yes, that's another one. You let that drive for revenge mask the glory of God upon your life. And it's it can detract from what God wants to accomplish through you. The best thing that you can do with any pain, any negative past, anything that you feel, why did this happen to me? is laid at the feet of jesus easier said than done definitely 
but it's very important and it just really starts from a realization of i am carrying this burden i am carrying this guilt i'm carrying this anger i feel xyz towards person a b and c and realizing how that is limiting limiting your your progress because this life is spiritual sometimes you don't even know that you're giving off these vibes but it's good i love self-awareness i love asking god questions i love reflecting so if somebody does something to me so recently somebody told me something that somebody has said that really really got to me and one of the things that i said because normally normally you'll be like how can this person say this kind of thing? I'm so nice. Because this is somebody that I feel that I've been really nice to. that I, Somebody that I feel that I respect. Previously, I would have been so upset that ah, ah, after all the respect, after being nice to this person, this person has the, you know, guts. I don't want to use what guts like, but this person can go ahead and say this kind of thing. But this time when I got the news, what I did was talk to the Holy Spirit and say, is there something about what I'm doing to this person that is not right? Is there maybe in me thinking being nice am i giving off the wrong vibes because sometimes you do these things and you don't know and it's the holy spirit that reveals it to us so that's something that really really i took out from this book if you're not careful if you don't release the pain from the past if you don't release the anger the hurt um the disappointment it can sow you know roots of bitterness in you which would really really affect your work with god so that's something that you really 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 need to deal with and pray for the redeeming power of the lord to set you free from every bondage any stronghold because those are strongholds that the devil uses to attack women a lot especially in like relationships because there's a lot of pain in the world so you need to set yourself free from every bondage and every stronghold um and then i also love the fact that she pushes um the narrative or not let me use no let me use the word narrative but she pushes the fact that there's nothing wrong with being feminine you know you have sometimes women want to be as aggressive as men because they tell us that we're too emotional we're too we're not rational which i, I really don't like when i hear those things you know but we try to be like men we try to be hard we try to be um vicious and it's unnecessary you know she was saying in the book that god created us with a feminine spirit to complement the world because everybody cannot be angry and vicious there's a need for the feminine side and she brought out the fact that um she was doing saying talking about the etymology of the name of god which is el shaddai you know all breasted one the nurturing side of the father that that is something that we're supposed to use as a strength and not a weakness and he come is like Huh, interesting. So that that really got me thinking. Obviously, I can't review the entire book, but I'm just telling you things that um things that really made me say wow. Um and then prayer and fasting. You know, I can talk and talk and talk about this. It's God has given you a vision, you have birthed something and or you are about to birth something but you need to go into prayer and fasting you need to pray you need to be a woman of worship and worship is another way to make sure that you ex exude or you bring out the right fragrance and dwelling in worship and it's not just in church it's about your entire life is your life dedicated to worship to god do you glorify god in all you do do you internally you know sometimes you can pray internally you can also worship internally do you magnify god do you do you celebrate his creation and that also includes other human beings do you love them do you um i was at a um at an event over the weekend and they were talking about love and i had to say to, to them that we need to demystify this love as only being in the sense of relationships and marriage what does love mean to god that is the essential foundation and love to god really is from the heart it's heartfelt it's sacrificial god so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son so love is sacrifice love is i know my rights but you know what i'm going to let it go love is loving everybody from the gates man to the less privileged to the one that you think is beneath you so it's not just about loving your husband or your family it's it's even in terms of your family how do you even treat them are you respectful to people because in doing that everyone 
whether they realize it or not, has the spirit of God in them. So when you honor a man or honor a woman, you're honoring the God in them. So that's an act of worship in and of itself that we really miss out on so one of the things that esther the esther anointing that you need to realize about the esther anointing it's an anointing given to women that understand the, the, the need to worship god that magnify god in and out of season by that i mean it doesn't matter whether you're going through high times it doesn't matter whether you're going through low times you glorify god as god you give him all the glory you know just as job said um had said that um Though he slay me, yet will I trust him. That's the kind of thing that somebody with the Esther anointing must also exude. Um, and let me see, let me see, let me see. Okay, I think that the last part that I will talk about is boldness and courage. Ugh, hello. What Esther did required boldness and courage. But remember one thing. She actually went on a three-day fast. She sought the face of God. Now... The author of this book may declare why it was necessary for her to do that. Remember, she was coming from a background of hurt, of brokenness. She had to deal with all of that with God in that three-day space. You know that when you do fasting properly, it's that time that you will seek God. And it's that time that God will open your eyes to things that you need to do. I find that in this generation, there are a lot of women that have a burden to... to birth something to do something for god to they're not even sure what their call is as i am like this and eh? in terms of calling i cannot tell you specifically oh this is the exact call but i have per time learned to start asking god about what is my assignment in this season what is this time in this season what are you trying to accomplish and what is my assignment because your entire call is broken into assignments there are times and seasons there are times where you'll be in obscurity there are times where you'll be at the forefront there are times where you'll be on your knees interceding there are times where you'll be in the battle front you know fighting the good fight of faith if you're not sensitive if you're not prayerful if you're not listening into the holy spirit you're going to miss those times and the seasons and i find that in my conversations with a lot of women there is a need for us to critically understand the times and the season for our destiny our, our divine calling our divine assignment very 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 critical this book i believe is one of the things that would help women not even just this because i'm reading deborah's anointing now and i'm like wow 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 you know i thought that this was great but that one is like you know but i think that aside from reading this book is going back to the blueprint of the father you know an architect wants to build a house they refer to the blueprint and i think that we need to go back to that blueprint and a lot of us either our family or even just life itself have, has told us what we should be or what we should try to achieve that is off tangent from what God really wants us to achieve. So I think that it's time for us to go back. And this Esther anointing really is an awakening. It's an awakening that women, we have a role to play in this world and you have an impact to be made. You were made for a purpose. You were made for a reason. Do you know what that reason is? This Esther anointing, it helps you to understand why you need to be a woman of prayer a woman of courage and a woman of influence is actually written on the top of the book very 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 interesting and lovely book and i think that every woman that senses a call of god upon her life it doesn't mean that you read the book and it means that you know you have the esther anointing maybe you don't have the esther anointing it would really open your eyes to a lot of things in terms of your work with god and even your ministry and it really really blessed my life and one of the things that i took out of it that i'm now actively asking god about is times and seasons times and seasons what what is the time what is the season you know the bible talks about the sons of issachar and they understood the times and the season and one thing that fascinated me when i was doing further study was that in the book of kings you know it listed each tribe the soldiers of each tribe and it numbered them do you know that the sons of Issachar were only 200? All, all the others had like 1,000. There was even one tribe with 40,000. 
but the sons of Issachar were hundred of two hundred rather and they were the ones who understood the times and the seasons and they knew what they were supposed to do so I'm asking God why what, what was so special about the sons of Issachar what did they do differently from other tribes that they were the ones that knew what to do so the other tribes they will say that they were mighty they were men of valor but you can be a man of valor and if you don't know what to do if you don't know the direction to go that strength is pretty much useless so I'm in that you know journey of learning so as i learn i'll definitely share with you and um yeah so that's really basically it and i really just want to encourage every woman and man out there that this is really the time to get back to the heart of the father it's not just about going to church it's not just about um going from one fellowship to the other it's your personal time with god how are you are you spending time with god are you fellowshipping with him are you are you just are you lost in the Holy Ghost like these are the times that we need to do it because it's the people that yearn for the father's heart in this time and this dispensation that God is going to use mightily and I pray that you will be such a woman in the mighty name of Jesus I pray that those of you that have questions for the Holy Ghost that the Holy Spirit reveal his answers to you in the mighty name of Jesus I pray that as many of you as are crying out to God to understand your purpose to understand your call that God will enlighten the eyes of your understanding in the mighty name of Jesus I pray that indeed you will be a mighty woman of valor that indeed you will be an Esther that indeed you will fulfill your purpose that you will be a woman of influence that you'll be a kingdom ambassador in this time and in this generation in the name of Jesus thank you so much for watching the next video I'm going to do is going to be the review of the Deborah anointing but before I end this video I want to specially tell you first hand about I don't even know what to call it I don't want to call it an event a meeting but let me just in summary give you the backstory so in since January actually I've been having meetings with but primarily my friends you know they they have a burden in their hearts something that they just but they just need clarity that that's something that has been a recurring theme is clarity and we go for lunch and you know in the process Maybe I share a scripture or God puts a word in my heart for them and it gives them that clarity. And I found over time that more and more women have this burden, but they're just not sure. They just, they're not sure what God wants them to do exactly. You know, they're not sure what they're meant to do with their gifts. You know, some, some see visions that they don't know what it means. So I, I want to gather in my mind not more than 10 women you know god has his way with these things and i want to gather 10 women and what we're just essentially going to do really first of all pray worship and then we're just going to share from our hearts you know if you're confused about life if you're confused about your relationship with God, if you're confused about so God gave you a word five years ago and if everything that has been happening has been contrary to that word, whatever it is, I don't have a name for this um, meeting, you know, but essentially it's for women that know that God, you know, they want to do more for God basically, you know, going back to Esther. For such a time as this so this meeting is for women that want to do more for god but they're trying to figure out the how they just want clarity you know they just want to know and maybe there's something that is holding them back you know there's something that is limiting them maybe a past experience so if this describes you please join us it's going to be on june 5th and it's a public holiday it's one of those muslim public holidays and we're going to do it somewhere in lekki um so if you want to attend this um, event please leave a message for me either on my blog or um, send me a message on instagram at adido in Jayasimi. and i'm only going to do 10 women majorly because okay for now it's going to be 10 women <laughs> because i really want that every woman that comes leaves with some sort of clarity you might not have 100 percent answers because god deals with us in in sometimes in bits and pieces but at least you would have a clear direction of where you want to go and that's the achievement we can't really achieve that with a room full with so many women i don't know but i think that the cozier or maybe it's me i just love cozy i don't know but it's just meant to be small intimate session 10 women and once we're full we're full and i'm trusting god that he's just going to do wonders on that day like 
I'm just I'm excited thinking about it. So that's my special invitation to you. Again, thank you for watching. Let me know your comments. You know, if you have any questions about the Esther anointing, do you have any questions about the call of God upon your life? Any questions about your relationship with God? I will be happy, happy, happy to answer those questions. So, yes, this is me signing out and saying goodbye. Bye.